Hello and welcome to a new Blender tutorial where we're going to make this loading screen here. It's actually pretty nice, I think it's uh, really soothing, so let's get right into it. First thing I'm going to do is press A, then X, and then click Delete, because we're not going to need any of this. At least not, uh, not as of right now. Now I'm going to press Shift A and import a plane. Next up, I'm going to click Tab to get into Edit Mode, and then I'm going to press 2 above my key letters or I'm going to click here which allows me to go into edge selection mode and then I'm going to press E, Z and just bring this up a bunch. You can also click on this here then G, Y and bring this a little bit to the front. Now next up what I'm going to do is import actually a podium which we saw in the beginning. For that I'm going to just import a circle change the radius to 0.5 and uh, the segments I'm going to leave at 32 which we're going to subdivide later. I'm going to tap into edit mode again and E, Z and bring this up something like this. Let's see, uh, just 0.5 oops, 0.05 sorry should be fine if not we can tweak it later and in order to fill this I'm going to just press F then inset this twice by pressing I, moving it in slightly, and then just doing the same thing again, just so we could get a nicer subdivision by pressing Ctrl and 2 above your letters. If you can't find that, you can just go to the modifiers and click on subdivision surface. So just so I can show you that, subdivision surface and two levels is exactly what we need. Next up, I'm going to press W on the keyboard, then Shade Smooth, and you will get this smoother shading. You can see it tapers inwards quite a bit, so what I'm going to do in edit mode is, going to, is I'm going to press Ctrl and R. Then I'm going to hover over this until I get this yellow line that goes across like so. Then left click and just bring it up like so, which is going to make it taper less, so it's unnoticeable. So now we have this little rim or edge on the edge well and that should be fine next up what i'm going to do is import a torus so i'm going to press shift a in object mode by the way you can toggle in and out of audit, uh, edit mode then to object mode by pressing tab or you can just click here and choose whatever you want so shift a in object mode and import a torus I'm going to rotate on the x-axis by 90 degrees by pressing R, X and 90. Next up, what I'm going to do is get into edit mode again by pressing tab, alt plus S, and I'm going to make this really, really slim. Like so, that should be fine. I'm going to make this a bunch smaller by pressing the normal S without alt in object mode, and that should be doing the trick quite well. Next up, I'm going to enable this snapping thing here with the magnet attached and I'm going to change it to face. What that allows me to do is just bring this up by pressing G and Z. And now, since it's the center is above this here, I can press G and Z and it will snap it right to the face so that we don't have a gap. I'm going to subdivide it again. And as you can see, now it's again hovering a little bit over it, but by just repeating that same step, we should get... Or maybe we will need to move it like this a little bit, or apply this before, and then do, this, uh, do the thing, but this should be fine as well. Now next up, what I'm going to do is basically import the glass element in front of which, which you saw, uh, by just adding in a circle, bringing it up by pressing G, Z and then moving it. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. F for filling, pressing I again twice. I'm going to press A to select everything. E for extrude, give it about a thickness like this. And now we're good to go again. Rotate it along the x-axis by 90 degrees and what I'm going to do now would be to basically give this here two faces as well. So I'm just going to press Ctrl R until we get the line that goes across. Left click, right click to step into the center, Ctrl B. 
and I'm just going to bring it out to the edge a little bit more. Now I'm going to click on Ctrl and plus, Shift and B to duplicate, right click to snap it back into the center. And now I'm going to press Alt and E, extrude faces along normals. I'm just going to extrude it a little bit and now I'm going to subdivide it. So now we get this little rim here, this edge. W and Shade Smooth. Again, we can do this with this here as well. And now I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to apply this by hovering over it with the mouse and pressing Ctrl and A. Or alternatively, if you can't do that, you can just click on this little thing here and press Apply. Now I'm going to enable my snapping again and do this. And now you can see it gets it quite well. So I'm going to move this in front just a little bit and off to the side so that it covers a little bit of it. You can also scale this then just readjust this until we get something that we like. I think this compositionally is a little bit better when it's a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to bring it over to the side a little bit more. So, now that is basically it, now we get to the materials. So, I'm going to just import a camera, adjust it to be 105 millimeters, rotate it, or just press Alt G and Alt R to reset the location and rotation. Alt G, Alt R. And now I'm going to rotate it along 90 degrees on the X axis and bring it back. And press zero on the numpad to get into the camera perspective view now bring it back now basically what those millimeters do is basically control the zoom of the physical camera uh, and that is usually giving you a different result than actually just moving in and out because it has a little bit to do with distortions so if you're not sure what you're doing just follow this this should be fine uh, if you know what you're doing, just experiment with it and you should get something maybe even better. I'm going to go here into this panel here, which is called the render properties and change it into cycles. Now by pressing Ctrl and B, I'm going to make a boundary just along this camera here while I'm in the active camera view, pressing zero. So now you can see I'm snapped into this. And now when I click here, it allows me to go into the render preview mode. I'm going to change this to GPU. If you have a compatible GPU, I would recommend you do this as well, because it usually speeds up your render times a lot. If not, you can render on the CPU and that should be fine as well. So for the background, I'm going to click on the background here, choose material, I'm going to call it background, so PG. I'm going to make this a little bit darker, so 0.3, the brightness. And I'm going to give this like 0.3 of a roughness. Now that we got that, I'm going to give this podium the same material, just like so. And for this one, I'm going to need two materials. One will be the actual glass. So I'm going to change the base color into white. So hue saturation value, V should be at one or RGB at one. And then you should be good to go. For the roughness, I'm going to lower it to 0.01 so now you can see it's really really shiny but we want the insides to actually diffuse the light that is coming through and that we can do by just going to transmission bringing it up to one now you can see it's kind of glassy you can't see through it because we're still in EV um, here it says cycles but the preview is always in EV and in order to change the diffusion of the light which is going to propagate through it I'm going to give this transmission roughness a value of 0.4 now you can see it's really diffused in here. So next up I'm going to choose this rim here. I'm going to apply a new material to it and for that one we're going to do a little bit of a shading trick in order to get the animated light propagating through it. So first up I'm going to actually lower the roughness to about 0.1. It's not going to do much but I think it looks a little bit better because you get this neon light effect. So now what I'm going to do is just basically get a gradient, gradient texture. I'm going to plug it into the base color and right away you can see that something is happening, but that's uh, it's not really the way that we want it to be. 
So I'm going to shift A, search for a mapping node. I'm going to plug it in here and a texture coordinate node. And we're going to plug the UV input into the vector. And now you can see it, propagate, it propagates along the UVs. If you don't know what UVs are, in the UV editing tab, you can see this, these squares. These are the UVs of the torus that we imported. So it's going to follow along the circle, starting from right here in the center. So, and that is what we're basically going to animate. Because if we move this along the X axis, you can see that nothing happens. Uh, that is because we need to move the location, not the rotation. As you can see, we move it from completely black to completely white. And that is actually what is going to do the animation for us. So now what I'm going to do is import a uh, color ramp, color ramp, and I'm going to change these here from RGB to hue saturation value HSV and from near to clockwise. So basically what that allows me to do is simply select this here, bring the value up to one. I'm going to leave saturation hue at zero or just Wait, saturation needs to be 1, so that you get red 1. On this side, we're going to do just the same. Just decrease this here. Oops, not the A value. That's the alpha. And I'm going to click plus here. And I think the easiest way to do it would be to go here and change the hue to 0.5. I'm just going to leave it at the opposite end of the spectrum, which allows us to get all of these colors here. And now when we move this, as you can see, we get a propagation of red with these colors that we actually want. So that is cool. Now we basically got that. But now we need some emission because we want to we want it to light up, right? So now what I'm going to do is bring this down and set the color to the emission. Next up, what I'm going to do would be to set the emission to 45, emission strength 45, and now you can see it kind of lights up doesn't have any shadows anymore now it's just like a glowing stick so that should be it for the scene next up what i'm going to do is change the word lighting to zero so the strength to zero and that is basically the effect that we are getting right now which i think is really 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 cool and uh i forgot to do one thing it's optional but uh I think it adds quite a bit and that is the rim here uh, i want it to be gold or at least gold ish so i'm going to select this uh, basically i'm going to click on the rim here the edge then press l and i'm going to go here to this uh, texturing thing material properties click on the plus sign assign now we can basically exit edit mode again add a new one going to call this gold the other one glass glass like this so going back into gold going to give this a goldish color metallic to one and i'm going to set the roughness to something small like 0.25 so that we get a nice reflection off of it it's not going to be too noticeable but it's going to be good enough so now as you can see we get this darker rim of gold and that basically leaves us with that result. So now how do we animate the light on this hoop? That is really, really, really easy. We basically need to combine this. So click and drag it here. Also here on the edge, you can click, drag, and bring it back. Just going to expand this. Then right here, you get this crosshair again, bring it down and search for, wait, search for timeline right here. So, at frame 1, we want, so frame 1 is right here, you can scroll through the frames right here. Frame 1, we want this value here to be negative 1. Right click, insert keyframe. Then at frame 45, we move this to 45, I'm going to change this to 45 so it ends right here. We want this value to be 1. And wait, insert keyframe, 
As you can see, nothing really changes between frame 1 and frame 45. That is because it starts completely red and it ends completely red. So right here you can see the keyframes. Once you click on the mapping node, they're right here. Uh, so when do we actually see the color switch? Basically when you move this, then you can see it propagates through and it changes the value inside here. So it would be kind of dumb to leave it just like this because the frame rate is actually locked at 24 FPS. We want it to be 30 or maybe even 60. Then you would have to uh, do 90 frames instead of 45 in, uh, in order to get the same animation speed. But this should be generally fine. So once you render this, by the way, I suggest you render this as a AVI JPEG. Gives you the smallest file size. You can later change the compression, or if you just want a still render image, then I would suggest PNG or something that conserves even more data. So now that we got this, basically all that is left would be to render this, or which is also optional, but I like it quite a lot. Once you render this, give me a second. So as you can see, once you render this, you get this diffused light effect, which is actually really cool, but you don't get the glowing effect. So in order to get the glowing effect, what I suggest you do would be to go to compositing, use nodes, bring this here, and insert a glare node. So what usually gives realism would also be a lens distortion node, which I'm going to plug in here. I'm going to set it to fit and 0 0.05, which is really overboard, but for this render, I kind of like it. So in order to adjust the glare, let me show you what it does. Here, the normal glare does exactly this here. We can adjust it to look more pleasant by just clicking on streaks and going to fog glow. And now you can see we get this really nice glowing effect. You can change the size to be even bigger if you wanted to, but I usually like it that this, you can change the quality from medium to high but usually that doesn't change much. You would have to increase the size and it doesn't make that much of a difference instead of time, compositing time. So I usually suggest keeping this at medium and size eight, which usually does the trick really nicely. So now you would be able to click on render, render animation, and you should be good to go. Your rendered image should look like this. So I hope you like this and I will see you in the next tutorial. See ya, bye.